of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. A blessed day, a blessed Sunday to everyone, wherever you are, dear friends, especially those who are following us through this live streaming, worshiping with us, I mean. And kaninang uh, umaga, I was about to go down for uh, breakfast, and I was trying to put on my white, my favorite uh, white shirt. I noticed, I noticed that it has a considerable uh, tear hole near the collar. No? I remember that I saw that there was a hole some uh, a couple of weeks ago, but did not pay attention. I used it and then sent it for laundry again. And I was surprised this morning that uh, that favorite white shirt, no? Had a bigger hole, no? It became worse. I have other t-shirts also, no? But uh, sometimes, yung mga gusto mong isinusuot, ay yun yung palagi, eh, especially in medyo malambot. I think it was given to me by my sister also. And uh, so, uh, nanghihinayang, I got a needle. Mabuti may needle naman ako doon, eh. Then I started to uh, to mend it. No, it is difficult for one who is like me, who is not, uh, who has no practice of these things. Much more because more difficult because yung butas ay masyado nang malaki. No, maybe my sisters would uh, would laugh at me when they would see how I I mended the the shirt. No. Uh, even pricked myself doing it no, with the needle. While mending the shirt, I realized how it is difficult, how difficult it is. It would have been easier when the tear was smaller, but I did not pay attention to it. And uh, this connected me with the uh, with the message of uh, today's gospel the chapter 16 to 20 of Matthew's gospel is dedicated to what we call church concerns the beginning would be part of the uh, of the early ministry of Jesus would be his preaching of the kingdom of God the healing, the parables, etc. Now, 16 to 20, uh, chap these chapters are dedicated precisely to these issues, no, intramural issues of the church. And today's gospel tackles the issue of fraternal correction and uh, other sayings and teachings of Jesus connected precisely with the uh, with the needs and issues of the church, so uh, fraternal correction part of this of the uh, gospel today or the main part of this is the what we call this uh, responsibility to correct those members of the church who are in error. Take note that this is addressed to a community, no? to community members, not only to church leaders. So the, the task of correcting is not limited or given only to church leaders, but to each one. The gospel text provides the uh, fundamental dynamics of this fraternal correction, how it should be done. And it provides the, the basic dynamics of this. One, for example, number one is to point out to the other the error in private. Probably to avoid putting the person being corrected in embarrassment. 
If that fails, get two or three witnesses as objective observers no, of this dialogue. If that still fails, then bring the issue to the church. No, the church as the arbiter now. And if the intervention of the church fails, in effect, the person cuts himself or herself from the community. Or in the language of the gospel today is, well, treat him as someone, as a Gentile or a... No, meaning uh, you do not have anything in common anymore. The point is, well, you resort to that if the good of the community is being jeopardized. No? So that is the, the idea. So at the bottom line of this fraternal correction is also for the good of the community because the, the errors at times being done by someone in the community is not only an issue, personal issue, but at times it overflows to the community and what is and the one that suffers is not only the person involved but also the community that's why the uh, sayings the teachings today of Jesus are concerns of the community fraternal correction should be done out of concern and love for the community, as I've said, for the church, and for that person also. As St. Paul would say in the first reading, we owe to no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. So it should be done in the spirit of love. When we correct, it is always in view of the good of the community and of that person. The first reading from the prophet uh, Ezekiel expresses this responsibility of correcting another in error by pointing out that we share the responsibility of the sinner if we have not done our responsibility of correcting that person in error. You do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt. But I will hold you responsible for his death. That is the way Ezekiel in the first reading expresses our own responsibility for the other person who are other persons who are in error. So to point out that we have a great responsibility in correcting others. In other words, one cannot excuse himself or herself from that responsibility of correcting the others in error. We cannot say, ay, wala kong pakialam dyan. Buhay niya yan. O hindi naman ako sinasagi niyan. Ayaw ko mang himasok sa buhay ng may buhay. Sometimes we say, you know. I know that uh, from experience how difficult it is to correct someone. Because on the one hand, we also have our own failures. At times, we fear hurting others. That person and how person, we fear also how that person reacts if he or she is mature enough to receive the uh, the correction i remember one uh, case no not here uh, a priest who corrected someone who uh, because of the scandal that is being that was being uh, uh, that was happening in the community because he was supposed to be uh, connected with the church 
as uh, lay minister, but he was with uh, known to have a kirida. So he confronted the lay minister about it, and then the lay minister insisted of knowing who told him the chismis, as he would say. Of course, the priest did not want to 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 reveal. And this person brought him to court because he said that he, he was defamed uh, uh, against the priest for defamation. Uh, only to appear later on that indeed it was correct. No? Uh, if the person is not open and not mature enough to receive Correction, that is also a very difficult thing no? to do. That's why uh, in uh, our life, as, uh, sometimes we get so many, so many uh, feedback of people, how to correct this one. It's so difficult, I would say. You know? Madaling magmisa, magpakumpisal, pero yung mag-correct sa iba, nako, napakahirap. For those who are being corrected, let it be an exercise of humility and should be seen as an act of concern and love for you if you are being corrected. Masakit, totoo. But ultimately, it is for our good. And for those who correct, one should be clear about the motive of and the manner of doing it also, that you correct out of concern and love and not out of anger and not to shame or embarrass that person. Otherwise, do not correct if you are not clear with your motivations. Since we are not perfect, let there be openness in correction. Openness to correction. And for those who correct, let there be also be consideration and compassion for we are all fallible. And ultimately, as I've said, it should be done in the spirit of love for the community. For, because the, the evil, the error does not end with you, but many times it overflows into the community, and the community suffers. That's why Jesus recommends precisely here today and many of his teachings how the community should be treated and should grow. And one of them uh, at the end of the gospel today is the unity in prayer that what whoever said whatever two persons agree to ask God no, of something no, God will give us that grace so as a church as a community we unite our hearts our voices in prayer especially asking his help and mercy for our world facing this pandemic and for all other needs of the world. May the Lord, who is merciful, help us to grow as a community, as a church of believers, followers of His Son. Amen.